Hi, this is Amy Theory and Christy Coe with the Learning Assistance Program. The purpose of this screencast is to provide information on the collection and reporting of data for students receiving lab services, to discuss the different types of assessments and how they work together in a comprehensive system, and to inform districts on making a plan for data collection. As a result of the 2013 engrossed substitute Senate Bill 5946, Strengthening Student Educational Outcomes, the legislature required LAP data reporting. The purpose of this data report is to measure the impact of the services offered. We also know that using data to make changes to programs is best practice for strengthening student outcomes. Using cycles of improvement can help districts be effective in making data-driven decisions that inform practice. Implementation science uses plan, do, study, act improvement cycles. Over the course of three process cycles, desired outcomes can increase up to 80% by studying the results during each process cycle and making adjustments to the implementation plan, the desired student outcomes will improve. It is important to study student outcomes to determine what needs to be improved and adjusted within the implementation plan. It is also important to remember that full implementation takes time. Full implementation is a process. This graphic shows the difference between letting implementation happen and making implementation happen. When we let implementation happen, we are only 14% effective over the course of 17 years. However, when we are purposeful and actively implement, we can be 80% effective in as few as three years. One of the purposes of reporting is to review the effectiveness of program implementation. Districts and schools should have a comprehensive assessment system in place. A comprehensive assessment system includes universal screening, diagnostic assessments, formative assessment processes, and progress monitoring. It is important to recognize that different types of assessments are useful for different purposes. It is also important to ensure protocols are followed for all formal assessments, decision rules are in place for students not making satisfactory progress, and training is sufficiently delivered to instructional and data teams to support implementation of the comprehensive system. The key is to ensure the results of an assessment are used for the intended purpose. For more information on the comprehensive assessment system, please review the MTSS section in the menus of best practices and strategies, or visit the OSPI MTSS website. When schools report academic growth and progress monitoring data, narratives are used to explain how students are identified, progress monitored, and exited from LAP services. Narratives are also used to explain program effectiveness and the methods used to calculate months of growth. Assessments serve different purposes. Universal screeners are used to identify all potentially at-risk students. They tend to over-identify students, meaning more students are identified as potentially at-risk then are actually at risk in an attempt to not miss anyone who might be at risk. Universal screening takes place at scheduled intervals and is followed by more targeted diagnostic assessment for students potentially at risk. Instructional decisions are not based on universal screeners. These screeners inform decision makers of whether or not a diagnostic assessment is necessary. Districts can review the Universal Screening Tools Chart from the National Center for Response to Intervention as a reference for selecting assessments. This tool chart can be located on the LAP website. Diagnostic assessments identify the initial skill level for each student and can determine the need for supports, interventions, enrichments, and resources. Assessments are administered before instruction or after screening occurs to identify the appropriate instruction and or intervention plan. These types of assessments provide detailed information. Once the data from this type of assessment is available, educators can determine what to teach and select appropriate interventions to address specific skill needs. Formative assessment is not a single event, but rather is an ongoing process used to assess learning and adjust instruction. The formative assessment process is deliberate and provides actionable feedback to improve students' learning. There are four attributes to formative assessment to clarify intended learning, to elicit evidence, to interpret evidence, and to act on evidence. Formative assessment is linked to the immediate learning that occurs during a lesson. Progress monitoring tools help determine the next level of instruction or intervention to be used with individual students, small groups, or an entire class. Progress monitoring assesses what a student understands as a result of the unit of instruction. 
Districts can review the Academic Progress Monitoring Tool Chart from the National Center on Intensive Intervention as a reference for selecting tools. This chart can be found by going to the lab website. The following slides will provide you with some questions to think about as you plan your lab program. Start by thinking about how you use student data to identify students for lab services. Students must be identified through multiple measures, but you will want to report data on the measure that most strongly informed your decision for serving individual students. Once you have a plan for identifying students for lab services, determine how often you will formally review student progress and with what measure. You will also want to make a plan for how you will determine if students are ready to exit lab services, what measures will inform your decisions, who will be involved in the data review process, Will students only be exited from lap services at semester, or will they have the opportunity to exit at more frequent intervals? As a part of implementation, you will want to have a plan in place to review the effectiveness of your program. Was your program implemented according to your plan? Are students making progress in meeting their learning goals? How are you determining the effectiveness of an intervention, or if the intervention was implemented with fidelity? Districts determine how they will calculate months of growth for student-level reporting. Various resources have been developed to assist schools as they calculate months of growth for LAP students. These resources are available on the LAP website. Also on the LAP website, we have provided a LAP gathering workbook. This workbook can help schools with data collection throughout the year. The following slides attempt to clarify timelines for LAP reporting how data will be reported in CEDARS and also in the LAP reporting tool in EDS. Each year, districts taking a LAP allocation will complete Form Package 218 in iGrants by September 1st. The information you will be asked to provide in Form Package 218 will be about program planning and assurances. Your LAP data collection will be ongoing throughout the school year. This is the student level information that will be inputted into your student information system to be uploaded into CEDARS. This is also the school and district level data that gets submitted in the LAP report tool in EDS. By July 1st, districts need to have their LAP data collection complete in EDS. The following slides go into more detail about what needs to be reported and into which system. For districts running a summer school program, they will be asked to submit Form Package 247 in iGrants by September 1st as well. For all students receiving English Language Arts, Mathematics, or Behavior Services, you will collect data on identifying students for services, progress monitoring, and student growth. Even students receiving Behavior Services need to be reported in either English Language Arts or Math or both. Student level information gets reported to CEDARS. The student level information categories listed here are the data that will be pre-populated into the EDS system from CEDARS. The student information system will send the data to CEDARS, which will then send the data to the lab reporting tool in EDS. Student level data does not have to be hand entered twice. Districts will just have to verify that this student level information is correct in the EDS system. Program enrollment data can be entered ongoing throughout the year. Academic growth can be entered as it becomes available or at the end of the school year. Please note the following CEDARS codes have not changed from last year. Use code 6 for students being served with math supports. Use code 7 for students in grades K2 receiving LAP academic readiness. Use code 11 for students receiving graduation assistance or 8th grade transition services. Use code 37 for students receiving ELA LAP services. Use code 38 for students receiving behavior services. Use code 39 for students receiving readiness to learn services. For further information on how to code students, please refer to the CEDARS manual on the LAP data reporting webpage. In the LAP reporting tool in EDS, schools and districts will be reporting on LAP allowable services. This data will be entered at the school or district level at the end of the school year. It would benefit districts in their data reporting to have school and district level data managers working in coordination with one another, as well as with the CEDARS administrator and the student information systems manager from the district. All reporting for the current school year needs to be completed by July 1st. Following your submission, OSPI will review your lab data report. For more information on reporting specifics, please visit the data reporting tab on the lab webpage. 
OSPI monitors lab requirements as part of the state's consolidated program reviews. The primary purpose of monitoring is to review program effectiveness. We will review how lab students are identified and served, how districts allocate and fund resources, including meeting the K-4 first focus on English language arts, and how programs are implemented. If you have any questions regarding the lab student data reporting requirements, please review the resources on the lab website. If you have additional questions, please feel free to email the lab team or give us a call. We'd love to hear from you.